filters, filtering groups, filtering by a rollup. There's loads of different ways you can use filters in Notion databases to find the information that you actually want to see. If you're interested to see how filters work in Notion, make sure you stick around and I'll tell you how. Subscribe and hit the notification bell to stay part of the conversation. For free Notion templates, check out the link in the description below. When you are filtering information in Notion, you can actually use the properties of the database to filter by. So we're going to create a text property, a number property, a select property, and a checkbox property in this database. Now I'm going to add in some information so you can see each row is a separate page, which will be what we're filtering for. When you're trying to use filters in Notion, depending on what property you're filtering for will actually change the things that you can filter for. Because filtering for a text property, you can't look for bigger than, smaller than, etc. because that would be what number properties are for. And in the same sense, you can't filter to see if a checkbox is ticked if it's a select property because there's no checkbox there. So I'm just going to put this database in a column so it's a little bit more condensed so you can see what's going on. And now I'm going to add in the first filter. So you can see it defaults to name and name is actually classed as a text property. So if I start typing in letters, it's case sensitive. So if I type in capital F, it will show me all of the names that has a capital F in it. And I can change that for is, so it searches for the exact thing I'm looking for or is not. And it's going to change that search and filter for what we're looking for. I can then use all of these different options using that capital F as the main thing that it's looking for. So is it starting with, is it ending with, but then as I go down to the bottom, you can see, is it empty? So that is asking if the whole name property is empty or if it is full. Now, when we change the property, that box in the middle also changes. So you can see now we've got checkbox and is ticked or is not ticked. And we can change whether it's the tick box, the tick, or is and is not. And whatever you're looking for, that is how it's going to filter. When you filter for a number, completely different options come up. So Notion knows you're looking for a number. So maybe you're looking to filter things that are bigger than, smaller than, equal to, not equal to, but you still have those default is empty, is not empty as filter options. Using these filtered views can actually be really useful in creating different views of the same database. So you can just look for things that are between certain numbers or smaller than, greater than certain numbers or in a specific category. And when filtering for categories, normally you'd use the select property. So you can see you can use the select and those options change again. So you can change the option to is or is not. And when you click on that variable, it will give you that whole drop down list of that specific property. Now the text property works in the exact same way as the name property because they are both the same thing. They're both seen as the same thing. So you can filter for the same information. And when you start adding filters in, you can actually dial in down on the information really specific as to what you want. So we're going to look for things that in the select property is not done. So it's going to show me everything that doesn't have done as part of the select property. But I don't want to see that page that has nothing in there. So I'm also going to ask if the select is not empty. This means if the select property is empty, it's not going to show. Now, if I wanted that information to show, I could get rid of the filter or I could actually change and to or. So now it's looking for that first question is select not done or is select not empty. So it's going to pick pretty much everything in this case. I briefly went over advanced filters in another video, but you can add groups into filters so you can group different filter checks. In this example, you can see I filtered for the name, which is a text property asked if it contains a capital F and then I've asked also because it's got the and in there checkbox is not ticked. So you can see it's now filtered for the first and fourth and both of these are unchecked. Now if I copy this database so you can see the whole view you can now see all of that information is still in the database, but I'm just filtering that specific view at the top for the information I want to see. 
So the other information doesn't disappear, it doesn't get deleted, it's still there, it's just not being shown. Now because that is a filter group, we have AND in there, and if we add another filter, we can select OR. So this means we can have a filter for AND, AND, OR. Now in this case, I'm actually going to add another filter and ask OR checkbox is ticked. Now this does cancel out that other filter that we had in that group, but you can see now we've got three different filters. We have a group with an AND condition and a separate filter with an OR condition. When you have a filter in a database view, anything that is certain in the filter will actually automatically be put into that new entry that you put in. So if we push the new button, you can see the capital F will be put in automatically because that is the filter that we're asking for. It won't, however, put in the other filters. So if we were to change the filters and say that the checkbox has to be ticked and then we add a new, you can see the F is put in and there is a tick box and it's checked because they are the two things that are definite in this filter. Now a really common use for this filter is actually adding in a date property allows you to filter for the date. So if I add a filter that says date is today, you can see everything's disappeared because nothing has a date. So if I add a date into one of these pages, say it's yesterday, it won't show because it's not specifically today, but it still has a date. But if we add a new property in that database view, it will automatically put today's date in there. This could be useful for documenting maybe your journal, maybe transactions, or anything where you need today's date to automatically be put in, or if you have other filters you want to automatically be put in, you can have that in the filtered view so you don't have to do anything other than putting in that new entry. Now you could have any property filtered and then that would automatically be put into whatever new thing that you put in that specific view. If your workspace and setup is a little bit more advanced and you have relations and rollups going between databases, you can actually filter for the relation and filter for the rollup. So I'm going to relate database one and database two and then I'm going to hide a couple of these properties so we can see everything. Now I'm going to remove those filters so we can see everything in the database. And now I'm going to relate some of the things in database 1 with database 2. So I'm going to relate first with first, second with second, and third with third. I'm now going to change this files property into a numbers property because I don't really use files for filtering, I guess you could if you wanted to, but I'm going to use numbers because it's probably my most common use for filtering. Now when I go into the filters of database 1, you can see database 2 relation comes up as an option, and then I can ask if database 1 contains a specific relation. So I can now filter database 1 for the relations between that and database 2. You can then add on more filters, add that into a group, it all works exactly the same. And the same things works with a rollup. So using that relation we now have, I'm going to roll up that number property that we've created. Now when I go into the filter, I'm just going to remove this filter, and you can see there is all of the different rollup information. Now when I go into those properties, you can see the rollup is a property, and because this is a number rollup, it will give us the number filter option, so equal, not equal to, greater than, smaller than, etc. So now I have a filtered view for the rollup, and I can see the relation to where that rollup is coming from because it's the same page. So if I do have a list of a couple of entries that meet the rollup criteria, I can then go to the specific relations, those pages from database 2, to actually find out where that information is coming from. Now if I change the rollup to name, it actually gives me different things I can filter for. So because this is no longer a number, it's treated as a text. So you can see we now have two drop down menus, but essentially this works exactly the same as the name or the text filter options. Now filtering for formulas work in the exact same way, it just depends what output you're giving from the formula, whether it is a number or a text. If you're interested to learn more about Notion, check out this video over here and I'll see you there.